What's up, you guys? I'm Natasha. This is the kitchen garden at Shepherd and Pepper's Farm. Yeah, we had a storm and it collapsed one of the arch trellises. Um, so we're gonna have to work on that later. So <laughs> anyways, I have some stuff that I need to get planted in for the fall garden. But as I'm looking around, there is a lot of stuff that I need to harvest and some stuff that I'm gonna have to rip out and some beds that have been marked. So typically the winter garden is like a full scale operation, the same way kind of the summer is. It's not as intense, but it's still, we do a lot of winter gardening and this winter is gonna be a little bit different. We're still gonna be growing a lot of food, um, but we're gonna have to scale it back a little bit this year for two main reasons. Number one, we're gonna be doing some work on the beds. They're a few years old now. Um, we didn't use pressure treated wood because we didn't want to leach any chemicals into the beds. And because of that, they need a little bit of work done on them, especially the beds that we used thinner boards on at first. So these ones that I'm sitting on right now are about two inches thick. They're two by fours. Um, but we used some thinner boards that we had for some of the other beds and those ones just are not holding up nearly as well. So Seth is gonna be working on some of the beds this winter and he's marked the beds for me for which ones like don't plant in those because I'm gonna be working on them. So we'll have less production space in that way. And then two, there's a small sliver of a chance that I may be getting carpal tunnel surgery on my hand, which will limit me for a few weeks on what I can be doing because it is my dominant hand that the surgery would happen on. Nothing is guaranteed yet. I don't like the idea of having surgery on my hand. So we're looking at other things, but there's a sliver of a chance that that could happen. And if it does happen, that's gonna set me back throughout the winter. I will say I would rather it happen in the winter than in the spring or summer. We're just gonna have to see. So the winter garden is not going to be this giant intense operation. Of course, try telling me that when I'm starting seeds. My brain goes haywire. So what I need to do is I need to clear some stuff out. I need to clear some stuff out of the garden and plant some things in. So we're gonna be doing that. So these back beds are pretty much where I'm gonna be focusing on planting today. This one right here is where we dug out the sweet potatoes. I need to remove a good bit of grass. The sweet potatoes are trying to regrow. We need to move that. But you can see Seth marked it. It says bed 14. There's no X's on it. So I know I can plant in this one. Bed 15 is the same. And then bed 16, I'm allowed to plant in all these. Obviously, he's doing work right now on bed 17. And there's a mass ton of puppers in there too. So but over here, melons. Over here, we have a honeydew. There's a little bit of damage on that, but not too much. Let's go to Sam. That's lovely. We may need to put these in bags. Because, yeah, it's just the time of the pickle worm has come. That's why doing melons in the later half of the season is always tough because the pickle worms get to everything. I'm going to leave this because it's already been eaten through. And I'm hoping that if they get to eat this one, they'll leave some of the other ones alone. There's no guarantee. But if it keeps up, I will probably just pull the melons at this rate. This is a Santa Claus melon right here. I'm going to take this because it's starting to ripen and crack. And it looks like this one is good. So yay, Santa. Good job. I'm going to put that in a basket in one second. Yeah, we also have some honeydews in through here. I'm trying to lay them on their leaves as possible to, what did I just, oh, pickle worms. I just put my finger in it. That's lovely. So, okay. Then. I don't know. I may pull these if it keeps up at this rate because that would give me more planting space. This is a honeydew right here too. Yeah, look, see, they're just getting chowed down on. So I don't know, I'll probably take these out. I think we're gonna start over here on this side though and pull these weeds up and plant in this bed. So I'm gonna time lapse you guys for this first part. So, and in a little bit, you'll get to see how I use a drill to pull grass out of the beds. It's really hard for me though to see food out here and not harvest it. All 
All right, so that is nice and cleared out. I have no idea how long that took. My two favorite tools for weeding a garden bed are a drill and a hammer. And the hammer like reaches in and like gets all the root out, which is really helpful. I try to make it as easy of a process as I can on myself because like right now I can feel pain all the way up. I don't think my carpal tunnel is just from my hand. It, it probably is partially, but I've had uh, an injury right here and here for quite some time. Um, and I just try to treat things as naturally as I can. Eventually, I'll probably have to deal with it. Hopefully, <laughs> it won't come to that, but one thing at a time, and the carpal tunnel is pretty high on the list because it won't let me sleep. So, um, anyhow, so got the weeds out of the bed. I'm gonna go grab some stuff like some broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, things of that nature. I want to plant these in here and then the plan is to kind of get the bigger items, the bulkier items in the bed. So since these are four feet wide, I can go ahead and I can do one broccoli plant for every square foot, get that in there. And then I'll probably do some peas along this trellis and we'll just keep going through with this. I'm gonna plant these in groups. So all the Bellstar broccoli together, all the Walton broccoli together, it helps when it comes to seed saving. So I'm gonna start sectioning these off and then we'll start planting them. All right, I'm gonna go grab the rest of the trays because I don't want to get all the bell stars in here and then be like, ah, I need more of those. So. All right, so I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna start planting this. I'm gonna do one per square foot, leaving a square foot around each of my trellises, my arched ones and my flat ones. So, like still on, time lapse for this. So since this bed has the melons in it, I'm gonna bump over to this one that's already empty and we'll start getting things planted into this one and then we'll address the melon bed afterwards. So time lapse again. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to come down here and along this panel, I'm gonna plant some peas. I did also start some from seed, but I wanna direct sow some too. Um, I'm gonna plant my peas in here. Did you move the thing? Okay, I'll be there in a second. You typically wanna space your peas about four inches apart, about an inch deep. That's how, roughly how deep you wanna do it. And then in between my broccolis and my cauliflowers, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start sowing carrots. So I'm gonna do a row of carrots in between each of the broccolis and cauliflowers. And I'm gonna do lettuce in front, in front of the peas. And that's gonna complete this bed in this section. I may go ahead and do an herb, we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and do green beauty peas. That's what we're gonna put in here, so. I'm also pulling out the weeds in this bed kind of as we go, since there's not a ton of them. All right. So. You can always plant these a little bit closer than 
four inches apart and thin them depending on germination. That's always a pretty good method. So carrots. Carrots are kind of a conundrum because they like darkness to germinate, but they don't like to be planted super deep. I'm sorry, they're clearing out, they're clearing out property behind ours. Now we haven't cut the back pasture recently, like not really. So you can see it's really overgrown. And every so often I'll see a tractor through the trees over there. And it's just like, ugh, I don't like that. I don't want to see people I don't want to see my neighbors like if I had a, a choice I wouldn't I don't mind there being neighbors I just don't want to see you like I like a little bit of privacy people drive by the house all the time or we'll have people come to the house and they're like wait I thought you said you had a farm I thought you said you had property and I'm like well I do have property so and they're like but it doesn't look like it when you drive down the street it just looks like a normal house and a community and I'm like that's because literally our whole lot is rectangular so up in the it's like not super you know wide it's long so up in the front it just looks like a traditional house and then when you get out onto the property it's it's a lot i'll have to after we mow down the pasture i'll take you guys on a property walk maybe that'd be pretty fun all right so danvers 126 is my favorite version of a carrot it grows outstandingly well in bad soil we're gonna plant these it's in there somewhere bugs Only dig in the grass bed. No, that one. That one. That one. Yep. Okay, so on. So now I'm just gonna cover this lightly with the dirt. I'm gonna need to go to the garage and grab labels and a pen. So I'm marking down what's what. And then we're gonna do another row of these in this same bed. And we're gonna do some lettuce. And I'm trying to keep my carrots one type per bed. Then we're gonna have to get some water on these because they look pretty peeved. I'm going to repeat the exact same process in this bed over here where I plant carrots and lettuce and peas. So we're gonna pick out a lettuce, essentially, whatever this is. We're gonna do this one. And then, so we're probably gonna do carrots and beets in the next bed because I don't think I have enough of these Scarlet Nance carrots to do more than one row. And I'm really trying to keep it like one thing of carrots per bed. So, all right, so we're gonna do whatever this is. Let's find out. What does the park say? Green leaf. I see you. We're gonna do green leaf lettuce in the front, fancy French peas, along with chalice, scarlet and nance, carrots, and what type of beets do we wanna do? Let's do Detroit red. We'll do some Detroit red beets. Yes, Angel. Yeah, when we go inside, I'll give you a bath. Actually, I'm gonna do the sugar beets. Mm. 
Yes, babe, when we go inside. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. I'm tired, I'm worn out. I will do more planting over the next few coming days, but this particular moment, I'm ready to go inside. <laughs> See you guys next one.